Okay, welcome back Physics 20s to our next lesson in Chapter 7. Today we're going to be looking at 7.2, which is talking about vectors in simple harmonic motion. So the last lesson we looked at restoring force. We calculated what the restoring force is uh, in a spring and it was a really similar formula to before. Uh, in the last chapter we had F is equal to Kx. But yesterday, or in the last lesson, we added a negative on there. The whole purpose of that negative was because now we're talking about the force in the spring. So this was trying to show that the X, whatever amount you've displaced, uh, compressed or stretched the spring, the force in the spring is going to be in the opposite direction. So if you compress it this way, the spring is going to push back in the opposite direction. So that was the only purpose of the negative was to make those in opposite signs. And we did some calculating of that. Um, but it's also good to note here that the force is going to change through simple harmonic motion because the X is going to be changing. It's going to go from max compressed to equilibrium to max stretched and go back and forth. So since the X is going to be changing, the F is going to be changing as well. So here it says the force changes linearly through simple harmonic motion. That's just because this is a linear formula. There's no squared on the X or anything like that. F is proportional to X, right? So kind of show that a bit further. I have this spring. We're just show when we compress it, it's going to be over here. And then it's going to go back to equilibrium and stretch into this position, right? So this next slide just kind of shows those positions there. And I'm going to write F is equal to negative KX on each of them. So we can kind of look at the restoring force and of the spring in those points, negative KX, All right? So first in the middle, the X is zero. That's the equilibrium. So there's no stretching or compression. So if that's zero, let me just use another color here. I will make X is equal to zero in that spot. So the force is going to be zero. There's gonna be no forces in equilibrium. We mentioned that before. Over here in this position, X is going to be at its kind of maximum. That's its amplitude right there. Um, let's just say that this is the negative direction. This is the positive one. So this would be our max negative displacement. It's compressed in the negative direction. So we're going to have a high positive force pushing it in the positive direction. I'll put an arrow there. It's going to be pushing in that direction. That's what the spring is doing. Now if we look over here in this position, we have our X is a positive displacement. So our force is going to be pushing the other way. It's going to be pushing negative. Okay. So I'm just going to highlight these, uh, these forces here, we go from zero in the middle, positive on the left, and negative on the right. And in between, it's going to be changing. So it's going to be its biggest positive here, a little bit less positive here, again zero in the middle, a little bit negative here, max positive there, and it keeps going back and forth. So we have a changing force as it mentioned here. Now what we're going to talk about today is how that changing force is going to change the other values. So we're changing our force but we know that force is equal to m times a. So if we change the force, we are going to change our acceleration, which makes sense really close to equilibrium here. There's not gonna be much acceleration because it's barely, uh, barely compressed. But over here, we would have our maximum because it's the most compressed. So it's gonna be changing acceleration. And if we look at what acceleration is, acceleration is or equals to a changing velocity. That was our definition of acceleration, changing velocity. And then velocity was described as V equals D over T or how much our displacement changes. So this is change, changing displacement. So I'll switch back to another color here. Let's go with orange and see that when we change the force, we change the acceleration, we change the velocity, and we change the displacement. There's a lot of changing going on. Last lesson was more looking at the force. Today, we're gonna to look at how acceleration changes, velocity, and displacement. Okay, so I'm gonna look at three diagrams here of all the different types of simple harmonic motion we looked at and how they're gonna change uh, all those three values throughout it. And we're gonna first look at the displacement because I think it's easiest, next acceleration, and last, our velocity. So let's start with the displacement. Uh, looking here on the far left with a vertical spring. In the middle, our displacement is considered to be zero. This is the equilibrium position. So I'm just going to put an E there for the middle, which means equilibrium. Now, this applies to the pendulum in this position here, equilibrium, and for the horizontal spring right here in equilibrium. It's where it would be 
Um, if you set it there, there's going to be no forces on it, no acceleration. It's just a net force of zero. Now the endpoints we talked about, this is the maximum displacement. This was called the amplitude. So I'm going to put an A there and an A there. Now the difference between these two is the direction, which is important with vectors. And I'm going to say going up towards the top is positive and down towards the bottom is negative. Then when it's up and compressed, this is its positive amplitude. It's the most compressed in the positive direction, and this would be the negative. I'm going to apply those to the other examples as well. I'm going to put amplitude here and here. Uh, let's call this direction negative, this direction positive. So this is our big negative um, displacement, and this is our positive and maximum displacement called amplitude. That's why I've put an A. And then putting them here as well, A and A. Let's just keep similar with the pendulum. This is negative, this is positive, this is our negative amplitude, and this is our positive. Okay, so that's, that's all we need to know for displacement. I'm going to be changing throughout, but I'm just looking at those maximum endpoints to kind of see those values. So displacement is done. And then next in red here, I'm going to look at acceleration. So I'm going to start, uh, I'm going to look at those three positions that we looked at before. I'm going to start at equilibrium and look at what the acceleration would be there. Well, what we knew from, acceler uh, from equilibrium before was that this is where there is no net forces. So if there's no net forces, then the acceleration should be zero. We saw that in chapter uh, in chapter three. So, and if you if you did set it there and it was on its own, like it wasn't moving already, you just set it right there, it, it wouldn't move. There's no forces acting on it. The acceleration is going to be zero. And even if it is moving back and forth, it doesn't change that in that spot, there's no forces. It could be moving at a certain speed, but there's no forces acting on it there, so it won't be accelerating. Okay, so I'm going to put that for all the equilibrium positions. A is equal to zero, A is equal to zero. In all of those cases, there's no net force at equilibrium. Now let's go to the endpoints. I'm going to look first over here at the vertical spring. The acceleration there. Well, acceleration is proportional to force, and if we look on the spring, when it's compressed its maximum amount, which it is here, that's going to be the highest amount of acceleration. So I'm going to put A max. Right? That's the most compressed, that's the most it's going to accelerate. And on the bottom is also a max because this is its maximum stretch. That's the max amount of force is going to be in the spring. Same thing. But what is different is the direction that it's going to accelerate. When it's at the top, the spring is compressed, it's going to accelerate it downwards. So I'm going to put negative value there, negative maximum value. And at the bottom, when it's stretched, the spring is going to, uh, the spring is going to pull it back up. So it's going to be our maximum positive acceleration, right? This will apply to the other examples as well. Uh, when we're in this position here with the pendulum, this is when it's most perpendicular or like against the direction of gravity. So gravity can accelerate it the most here. This can be our maximum acceleration. So A max, all right? And same thing on the other side when it's up in this position, A max. Again, the only thing that's going to change is the direction. Uh, here it's accelerating in that direction towards the positive. So I'm going to put plus here. And the other case over here going to the left, which is going to be negative. Same thing for the spring down here. I have a max and a max, really similar to the hanging one. It's just on the floor now. Um, over here on the left, it's going to be accelerating it to the right, which is the positive direction. And over on the right, it's accelerating it to the left, which is the negative acceleration. So for acceleration zero in the middle, max at the endpoints. We're done with that. We just have to do velocity now. So I'm going to switch to another color. We're going to do velocity in green. And I'm going to start looking at equilibrium again, but I'm going to look at the pendulum first. So look over at the pendulum and I write V equals right here again at equilibrium. We've actually solved some of these questions in chapter six when we looked at energy. So I'm going to switch to a purple highlighter here just for another color. We used to look at it as that up here it had EP, its most amount of potential energy gravitational, and it was stopped at that point. And then it swung down when it lost all that potential energy. It was moving fastest with its EK right here. And then as it started to go up again, it started to convert that kinetic back into potential. Where it had the highest amount of kinetic energy was right there at the bottom in equilibrium. So that's the fastest the pendulum's going to go. So I'll switch back here to the green, and I'm going to put max there, because that's when it's all its potential energy is in the form of kinetic. It's going to go back up to EP here, and that's when it's going to come back to stop, when it all converts to potential. So that gives me information about the endpoints, and that V 
is equal to zero at those endpoints right there, amplitude, and it's going the fastest in the middle, All right? This is the same for the spring. I'm just gonna go back to that purple and say that when we have it most compressed here, this is all the energy stored in that spring and it's gonna stop before it goes the other direction. It's moving, uh, actually in this case it's vertical, it's moving up to switch directions and it has to stop and then go back down. So it's gonna be stopped at that very highest point, all EP, which would be stored in the spring and for this vertical one, some, uh, some potential as well. So EP there, it's got EK max here as it's coming down. And as soon as it gets below that, you might think, well, isn't it gonna keep going faster past the equilibrium? But right after that, the spring is stretching. And so it's gonna be slowing it down. It's gonna be pulling it back in the other direction. So it's going fastest at equilibrium there. And we have all our EP, now not gravitational, but all this uh, energy stored in the spring at the bottom. So it follows the exact same uh, pattern there. So I'm gonna put V max here, where it's all EK. V is equal to zero, where it's all EP. And V is equal to zero, where it's all EP. Same thing for the horizontal, uh, yeah, for the horizontal spring. So I'm just gonna put the energy first. This one is nice, it's not, don't have to worry about gravity. Uh, we have EP here in the spring when it's max stretched. EP here when it's max compressed, EK here when there's no energy in the spring and it's just all in its motion or kinetic energy. So I'll put V is equal to max, V is equal to zero, and V is equal to zero. Now you might be wondering why didn't I put plus or minus for the max? It's gonna be both. Um, so if we look at the pendulum, it's gonna swing down in this direction, then it's gonna be a negative velocity, then it's gonna come back in this direction, positive velocity. Same value, just gonna be switching back and forth for directions. Same thing with the horizontal spring going back and forth and the vertical one right there. So I know that's a lot to look at. Um, it's a lot of different colors and things like that, but that summarizes up how the acceleration, velocity, and displacement all changes throughout it. Hopefully you can remember that. Displacement, equilibrium, amplitude for the uh, middle and endpoints. For acceleration, it's maximum at the endpoints zero in the middle and for velocity it's maximum in the equilibrium and zero at the end points all right hopefully that made some sense for you now it could ask some questions about how to calculate the v max or the acceleration so i'm just going to put here off to the side if you have to calculate the v max like it's the maximum velocity or really any velocity throughout it we've already done questions like this in the previous chapter so if it ever asked you about velocity use energy you're going to use that conversion from EP to EK. Now, even if it's partway through, we looked at those examples before, just take how much it fell, uh, or if it's in the spring, how much the compression was. So look at energy to solve those questions. If it's asking for acceleration, we're going to use the force involved there, and the F is equal to KX, and that F is equal to MA, so MA is equal to KX. I'm going to do two examples on the next slide showing one of each of these. So we have our example here. This is going to be for a uh, horizontal spring. A 250 gram mass is on a spring with a spring constant of 240 newtons per meter. When the spring is compressed and released, it moves in simple harmonic motion with an amplitude of 17 centimeters. What's the maximum speed? And uh, what's the maximum acceleration? I'm gonna start with calculating the speed. As I said on the last slide, if you're looking at speed, we're gonna use energy here. And if it goes from either, either one of these places, like from this amplitude or from this amplitude, uh, it doesn't really matter. It's gonna be going from there to equilibrium. We could use either spot, but I'm just gonna focus on, let's just say this one, right? When it goes from here to here, at this spot it's maximum amplitude, or sorry, it's amplitude. Amplitude is maximum displacement. So at its amplitude, uh, we have EP. It's all stored in the spring there. And then here we have EK because there's no force is stored in the spring. That's where it would be naturally at rest. That's for equilibrium. So assuming there's no friction here because it doesn't mention any friction or efficiency, those are gonna be equal to each other. So we say EPI is equal to EKF. This is for a spring. So we put half KX squared is equal to half MV squared. Looks really familiar to chapter six. We can cross out the halves. We're solving for velocity, so this is kx squared over m. Square root should give us our velocity. The numbers there are 240 newtons per meter uh, times by 17 centimeters, so 0.17 meters. That's squared. 
and we divide it by mass, which is 0 0.25 kilograms. Make sure you convert those units, square root, and I'm getting a number of 5.267, so that rounds to 5.3 meters per second. All right, now I do wanna note here, there is actually a formula on your formula sheet that already does this rearrangement and it's called V max. And what it says on your formula sheet is it says A square root of K over M. Now this is the same thing as the rearrangement we did here. All it does was it took X and said, well, this is the biggest X compression in that, which is called amplitude. So replace it with A. And well, why do we bring it out of the square root? Well, we see that this is the square root of x squared. So you could replace that with k over m and pull the square root of x squared out to the front. You're allowed to do that in a rearrangement uh, or simplification of math. Now we have the square root of x squared and they cancel each other out. And then just instead of putting x, we said, well, this is the maximum amount of compression, which is amplitude. So called that A with that letter right there. So using energy equations, I think is actually a good way because it kind of shows you understand the concept and you've done it before. So maybe you're just used to it. But if you want to use this Vmax equation, that totally works too. And it works for either a vertical spring or a horizontal spring. So it works for both. And you might think gravity is going to affect it there, but because when you place the mass on the spring and it's going to stretch to where it's in equilibrium with gravity, it, it's going to work for both equations. Um, you can prove it. It's a long proof, but it does work out to the same values. Uh, anyway, on to the next part. We'll put it in another color here. Uh, what's the maximum acceleration of the mass? I said in this case, use force. So we know that the force causing us to accelerate is in the spring. So the force is equal to kx. Make sure we include that negative because it's being pushed by the spring. And then we need to find acceleration from this. Like, well, where, where's acceleration? It, it's in force. Force is equal to mass times acceleration. So we rewrite this as ma is equal to negative kx. We're solving for a, so we divide by mass, divide by mass. And a is equal to our k, well, negative first, then 240 newtons per meter times by our x, which is 0 0.17 meters, divide by our mass, 0 0.25 kilograms. And you get a pretty high number. I'm getting 145.7, so that would round to 1.5 times 10 to the 2 meters per second squared. And you're probably thinking, that, that doesn't seem right. It's a really high acceleration. Well, to be fair, it's a, it's a pretty it's a pretty stiff string at 240 newtons per meter. And it's been fairly compressed, 17 centimeters. Um, so it will be a pretty high uh, acceleration. It's going to be going pretty quick. But because it's also 17 centimeters to um, accelerate over, it doesn't get to that high of maximum speed. So the acceleration is really high, but because it's only for a short distance and a short amount of time, not too high of velocity. Um, so that's it for this lesson. Hopefully that made some sense for you. I think that previous slide is a really good summary to look at and study from. Give those practice questions a try, and I'll see you in the next lesson.